Hey gamers, what's up? I wanted to do a quick video and talk to you about the uh, new versions of the consoles that are coming. That We're talking about the Neo, we're talking about the Xbox One S and Project Scorpio and all this that's happening because I hear a lot of doomsday talk about what's going on. Oh, they're going to kill consoles and they're making us buy new consoles and all this. But the fact is, if these consoles function with all the games present and future, and the new consoles are just the same consoles with upgrades, then they aren't really killing the older models. And I don't see a situation where the Xbox One and the PS4 are going to kill themselves as consoles because of this. It's like when a new graphics processor comes out, and it doesn't like kill PC gaming. The difference here is that the new games will still work on the old systems, while with PC gaming and new graphics cards, the new games won't necessarily work on your old computer because your old rig may not meet the system requirements of the new game. So there's a big difference there. This is not a new console generation. That's another thing I hear people saying, you know, like, oh, well, the, the, the Xbox One hasn't even been out long enough to have a new console. It's not a new console. It's not a new console generation. The Xbox One is not dead or dying, and neither is the PS4. These are Xbox One and PS4 consoles. Think of it in terms of cars, and I'll use the Xbox One as an example. Uh, there's a new model Mustang with a nice little V6. It, it pushes about 300 horsepower, and you can get it at a lower price. It does the job, it gets you from A to B with no problem. That's the Xbox One. Then there's the Mustang GT. It's the five liter V8. Puts out about 435 horses, but basically it's just an upgraded version of the V6. Bigger engine, moves a little faster, but not 100% necessary for the everyday driver. That's the Xbox One S. Now let's jump to the Mustang Shelby GT350, a 5.2 liter V8, 526 horses. It's a beast. And that's your Project Scorpio. Is Ford killing the Mustang brand? Are we going to see the end for the V6 or the GT because there are three options? No, because this is not an unusual business model. All the cars operate just fine. They all operate on the same fuel, you get where you're going, you don't have to have the faster one if you don't need it. You can apply this example to many different industries, and the most appropriate one is the PC market. Look at your gaming rigs and tell me that ASUS is somehow ruining PC gaming by having several models of the Republic of Gamers computers or laptops. They all offer different levels of processing power and hardware, but it doesn't kill gaming. Dell, Alienware, etc. There's tons of companies that do it. Now, with these new upgraded consoles, the new games will work on the old consoles, and that's what's key. Whether they run at the same resolution, that might be a question, but when someone's PC isn't up to date, and they tweak their graphics to compensate, or they buy the computer that isn't as powerful as the top-of-the-line computer, they aren't necessarily suffering because of it. Another example would be the, the cross-platform, you know, old generation to new generation games. When Call of Duty Ghosts came out on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, no one was really complaining about not having it as good on one console versus the other. Lots of games were released on both, and none of them were as good on the 360 or PS3 as they were on the next-gen consoles. And I didn't see any outrage over games that didn't perform as well as other versions of the game on advanced hardware. And this is even less of a difference. In the end, the truth is, and it may be a sad truth, that the average consumer probably won't even notice the difference, and if they do, they'll find it negligible. And as for those who don't, well, they'll probably just upgrade when they can. After all, there's no immediate rush. Since the upgraded consoles aren't getting new games all their own, there's no need to get one immediately, and it's not like every single game is going to be vastly superior on the upgraded systems from the day they come out. It just it isn't going to happen like that. All the chatter I'm hearing about this, it just seems really alarmist and like a massive overreaction to me. Now, that said, I do think releasing the new upgraded consoles does alienate early adopters, and that's not fair. I know I was just defending the consoles, but just because I don't agree that the upgrades are disastrous like so many seem to think they are, doesn't mean that I completely agree with the idea of actually doing it. In truth, it seems like a huge cash grab, and it takes advantage of gamers. There will be some who think they have to have it, right now on day one just because it's better but that's not really the fault of microsoft that's the consumer and there are those people and you know i always thought those people were ridiculous so you, you just have to take it for what it is but i don't see it being as detrimental to gaming or this generation of consoles and 
as it is being who I am and playing the way I play, I'll probably invest in them myself because I want to enjoy the greatest gaming experience possible. And I'm a little ticked off about that. There's no denying it, but I'm not crushed by it. And I, I just don't see like it harming the in industry the way people seem to think it, it might. Now, I'm also interested in what's happening with the PS4 Neo. Andrew House said, and I quote, it is intended to sit alongside and complement the standard PS4. That, that, that's an odd statement to me. If I'm gonna pay for an upgraded system, I'd like to be able to recoup some of that investment by selling my old one. And that, that's a comment that almost sounds like maybe it's an upgrade to the system. And if that's the case, I guess I feel like it would be kind of a failure, but I'm thinking they're just gonna do a whole different console. So it seems like the PS4 Neo, the Sony VR hub that connects to your VR headset, you know, that would be another thing that sits alongside your PS4. And that's the, that's the, the statement, the part of the statement that really got me to sit alongside and complement the standard PS4. And maybe that was just a bad way of phrasing it. I don't know. Maybe it's just a separate piece of hardware, a different PS4 that they mean sit alongside and complement so you can choose which one you need. I just thought that was a weird way of phrasing it and I, I wasn't quite on board and I don't understand what they mean by that and how the console will work. I'm hoping in the end that I can have one console that does it all and hopefully that system is Neo. Maybe it'll even cut out that little hub that you need for the uh, Sony VR. And you know, that's really all I have on it right now because none of us really know what Scorpio and Neo are. We haven't seen them. We don't you know, have a, a full explanation of them just yet. We're just hoping for the best, hoping that Project Scorpio has VR compatibility. Maybe they didn't say they're going to partner with Oculus or Vive or someone. Maybe they'll do their own headset. Maybe, just maybe, it'll, it'll be compatible with all the VR headsets. So. I'll have an Oculus coming in August, and that would be awesome if I could just plug it into a, a Scorpio and, and go. So I'm kind of excited by that prospect. And then you, you have a good reason for having the new consoles with the advanced hardware. Because now you have people who may not be into VR, who may not want to buy an Oculus, who may not want to buy a Vive, whatever the case may be, and they could buy the Xbox One S, and they would be happy with that. So. Just there's a lot to consider. I don't think it's detrimental to gaming. I don't think it's detrimental to this gaming generation. And some people are just really overreacting and causing a lot of panic over something that I think is not as serious as they seem to think it is. And that's all I have right now. So leave your comments below and let me know what you think of console upgrades and the future of gaming. Thanks for watching and I will catch you all later.